Also, someone's asked me to make an H emoji. If I would, it would have to be the, where's the animated H that's like dancing? This would be my H emote. <laughs> what do you guys think? I've actually prepared some notes for this one. So this is how you know I'm, I'm serious. Cause this essentially is gonna be the core. I've drilled into you, into all of you, how RPS and how Discord work. A lot of the time when I explain these concepts, I don't actually explain how I use them. It's just, I explain how they work. This time I'm going to explain exactly how I make my decisions and why I make the decisions I do. And it's based in this concept of tug of war. No matter what game you play, you will always have to involve these two concepts, right? It established our equals RPM. If you play Dota, it's like, oh, I'm going in for a last hit this time. I, the next time you fake, whatever, you go for a deny, whatever. Obviously in the grand scale of Dota, that's a very minor one. But there is technically RPS in literally every. You could think of it as like, you know, character design, system mechanics. And again, not just for fighting games, just anything. Ultimately, once a threat gets established, you usually balance between different options. One may be doing the same option that's been established, whereas one may be a direct counter to it or like a, a direct departure. But risk reward is just, you know, is just that. I mean, obviously like any game where, especially it's a more like, volatile system, they will probably play Risk of Ward. I think one of the best examples of like Risk of Ward being considered also in different games is um, in League of Legends. If you guys remember really old League, it was a very slow paced game, right? Like extremely slow paced. How it would work is nobody would overcommit because they didn't need to, right? Like they would just not take that risk. And then how it would work is if someone took the risk and then they, they died, the other team would just get like lock up even more and just use that advantage and never take a risk again. It was admittedly a pretty miserable period of League of Legends meta, right? Some fighting games will not let you get to this point, but most simple fight games will just force you into this. This is why sometimes it can feel very explosive or very, it can feel a lot different because once these concepts get established or it, the game is linear enough to just force them consistently, if you purely do things off of risk reward, your own risk reward becomes weaker, right? Because it's predictable. If you rotate the same safe options in RPS, it's predictable, right? So clearly you can't just be safe. I like to think of these two things as like a living, kind of like a breathing system. Someone told me recently that like, this is basically just like you're teaching people how to play poker. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? I've never played. <laughs> you have to remember that every time, think of like two sides. When you represent an option decided more by risk award or by RPS, someone may, it may start to think like, oh, you're leaning more towards this side, right? Now, a lot of people tend to actually play RP. I mean, okay, maybe not like that. PS, maybe, <laughs> maybe they play PS. <laughs> like, again, basically, it would be like someone represents rock or paper. Whereas people develop, they tend to play RPS without considering the risk of war and more so about how they can overwhelm the opponent. I haven't talked about this concept before, but you can force RPS in a poor risk reward way, like a way that would be nonsensical for risk reward. Like if you do it, you're you're crazy. But sometimes it becomes more valid underneath the fact that you can just overwhelm someone's stack. Mental stack is what you're focusing on in the current moment. That's really all it is, right? So like, let's say someone represents I ID at you, you ain't scared, right? Maybe you don't don't move and instead watch them looking to anti-air them as they approach. Basically when you're doing this, you're focusing on the fact that they'll jump. By nature of how human reactions work, it is actually easier than to approach on the ground. There is a weakness in this where the more you play someone, the weaker your play style actually, or basically you get downloaded as that focus. The tug of war means you have to balance these two things perfectly. The better you are doing this, harder it is to beat you. Ultimately, what matters in fighting games is representing different options and being unpredictable. Even if you do options that are unpredictable for the sake of being unpredictable, that creates an RPS situation. How I describe Hitachi's playstyle? He's a great example of what I'm talking about. Where like, he plays very aggressive. He tries to stack overload you. He takes risks that do not make sense sometimes. Like just, again, also straight up nonsense. DP. 2S. Bite. Clone. 2K clone. 5K clone. Clone. Beyblade. BRC. Teabag. 6H. 6H. Grab. 
GG's. But it works because he uses the threat of risk reward on you after he does it. And it's why people cannot emulate Hitachi very well. He's a very unique playstyle. His philosophy of how he approached the game and mine are nothing alike. But under this concept that I'm talking about, we would both be in this category of doing tug of war, right? Every person's playstyle is unique. Your preferences and your decision making is going to be unique to you, right? Like you're not going to mash when I mash. You're not going to block when I block. It's just a lot of people tend to like, they, they have this like weird weird idea that more simplistic games do not promote individuality in fighting games, which is not true. That's just straight up a lie. Because like inherently in any game you play, you're not going to escape the fact that you play the game unique, right? And it's going to be based on your experiences, what you value, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Master bait. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, funny. This situation is terrible. I would never, in fact, I've, I've gone on record for saying this. This situation is actually one of the stupidest things I did in the set. The reason why he bursts is because I cannot escape this here. There's no way you can escape burst. Your only option is you riot stomp. That's literally the only way you could have avoided this. Nothing else would have worked. The only reason why I did this was because no one has ever done this to Marlin. I can tell you that with 100% confidence, and especially in Exert, no one did it to, uh, to Marlin. This is a good example of just being unpredictable for the sake of being unpredictable. I took a poor risk and it worked, right? But considering the context, right, they got stunned and I win the game off of it. I've never done this since right? Ever. I've never done this ever since then. And this was the first time I ever did it. And it's because of this system. Basically, you could think of it as character matchups are more of a baseline mental stack. And from there on, player matchup is what kind of dictates decision making. Does that make sense? Unpredictability doesn't always equal great risk reward. It doesn't always mean they have to consider it either. This is a typically a case where people tend to force their character's advantages in situations that don't work. And this is typically how a lot of people that, again, that play top tier really struggle as they go onto a new patch. Not because they're stupid or they're, they're bad or dumb, dumb, diaper, baby, whatever. At the end of the day, they've learned to force a lot of interactions in their character's advantage. From the case of good risk reward, sometimes there is a problem in playing the matchup too much, right? This is, we live in an era where I know a lot of people, there's a lot of people who talk about seven threes and shit like that, but they, they basically don't exist. It's just, in, it's just incorrect. You can tell because in previous like fighting games, six, seven threes and shit like that, you cannot beat a lot of this. Like a good example is like what? Sagat versus Yuga. Wasn't that like seven? That was actually like a seven three, right? And I guess that's Dan Fierce. He's mauling him with this Hugo. This is a Ooh. shitty example. This is like the one, the one where you get shit on. <laughs> but what about the more uneven matchups? The ones so cursed they're forbidden to be spoken of in public. The matchups that hide under your bed. The ones with broken hitboxes. This is actually Eight how games. every, every Strive player talks and about matchups. Keep... He's dead. And you know what's crazy? Nobody ever said some shit like this is like 8-2. And in fact, like, Order Soul could still kill Zato. It's just, <laughs> you know, not a good matchup. I love the noise. The old noise. If this is 7-3, how the hell are there 8-2s in, in Strive? So sick. <laughs> I love woo! I love that noise you make. <laughs> that combo was a minute and thirty seconds. A lot of the ways that like older matchups were defined are not defined in the same way. You know what I mean? For a lot of good reasons. I'm not gonna lie, I'm lost now. To be honest, I don't even remember why I was I can't even remember why I was why I was putting on a matchup that matchup video, but that shit was probably good. Oh, yeah, I, I remember what I was talking about. So it's a, what a lot of people tend to do, and this is actually related to what I was discussing, where there's a problem playing the matchup too much, where some people also, like, will decide how they should play based on their character's strengths rather than their opponent's character's strength. There's a very big difference between doing that. Like, 
Not even close. And typically the worst risk reward is actually involving using your character's strength. If you're only playing into your character's strengths, unless your character is like, unless your character is doing this, I mean, there's interaction. There's going to be a weakness. Uh, no matter what, each option you represent is something that can be used against you. And in fact, I'm going to hit you guys with the homework for this time. So this time, I'm going to have you guys kind of write down your rank. What I want you to do is to go into a set, represent a strong RPS option for your character. If they don't adapt to your option, keep forcing it until they do. Recognize that when you show these options, your opponent should adapt. If you're the type of like person that's like, oh, so scrappy, I don't like this dude, stinky, bad player. When your option doesn't work, you should consider less about that and more think of it from the lens of when you do something, it's expected that they learn. If they don't learn, that's a plus. If they do, then you move on to the next thing. Try to be more aware of representing different options and be respectful of how your opponent adapts. It is expected that they adapt, okay? How do I submit this? I have a channel in my Discord that's called <laughs> Homework, Homework, Homework. And now I'm gonna also say, is it okay if I show your, or I guess your homework on stream? Yes or no. Write down notes, check them in between sets. If you wanna kind of write down like how they play, whatever, I think that could be very good. Maybe a Google form could be good for this. Am I gonna give you a bad grade if you don't turn in? Yes. And I'm gonna send you to jail too. I'm sending you to Cali jail. <laughs> Crime did not do their homework. Yes, 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 yes. Fucking yas. I'm so proud of that statement. Adapting is RPS. Will they adapt or will they not? That is true. That's literally what I just taught you. All of this was just to say that. So next time what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over people's homework on stream and I wanna kind of show off like how these things can work. Uh, and of course, like I will say, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit this. Actually, I'm a little ashamed to admit this, but I am a little out of touch with the beginner experience because it's been so long since I had been a beginner. Like it's sometimes seeing that and like being able to understand how you guys are learning helps me teach you better, but also I can make lessons out of it and kind of show like, oh, this is where you may have went wrong. Maybe think about it this way, you know, things like that. It's it's more of a coaching session on your fundamental approach rather than your gameplay approach, which I think is much more important. I guess, honestly, if you want to view it a little more systematically, you could think of it as like risk award is more of the passive threat or the passive concept, whereas RPS is a lot more active. They work together, but usually when you use one, it will lead into you sacrificing it over the other. That topic is very, very advanced. Like th there's a reason why I, I've drilled into people what RPS and risk reward is. Cause honestly, before I made videos, people didn't really talk about that stuff. That's that. Um, I am gonna put a shadow of Rome. Banana peel. Set banana peel on the ground. After obtaining a banana peel, press right on the directional button to lay it on the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just startled myself with the fucking banana peel. <laughs>